Hello, uh, we're getting started with Free Code Camp today. It's pretty exciting. Uh, Mesfin and I are the ones that are here today, um, but uh, hopefully uh, you're watching this by recording and you're joining us uh, at another time. But um, the plan for today is to create a repo so that we can track our progress with uh, um, our own pages that we're creating um, kind of in parallel uh, with, with the work that we're doing in the, the interface in Free Code Camp. So this helps us practice uh, our Git, and it's also just you know, creating simple pages that uh, are, you know, at, at you know, a later stages, it's gonna get more advanced and uh, these, these concepts will be integrated more into the web page itself. But um, this will allow anybody that is not able to view the recording, uh, they'll be able, or even if they're not able to view the recording, uh, they could just come to us and find out what, what repo we're working in. And then they would see immediately that the team started here and then they ended at a different time. Uh, so. Um, yeah, Sam is uh, trying to join us, but he's saying that he has some internet issues. So, yeah, I think Ari had the same thing that, um, you know, just different different technical difficulties were causing others to not be able to join us. So I think doing something like a repo that, uh, that shows our start and end point and uh, just, you know, major learning that's taking place in between, I think that'll be huge for us as a group to, you know, not leave anybody behind. Uh, it might slow us down a little bit, but I think in the end, um, we'll be happy that we did because we'll have not only documented our progress through Git and GitHub, but uh, we'll also be working together as a team and um, building our relationships with each other. Um, and with end goals of you know furthering our careers so um which we would be parts of teams or working with others remotely uh asynchronously as well so uh these skills that we're going to be learning through git and github are are going to be critical but with that i'm going to share my screen and I'm going to create a repo. So let's get into our study group. Uh, I'm going to create Okay, so from our initial work from Shrikant I forked, I forked a, a, uh, a version of Srikanth's JS study group. <clears throat> and um, I will, uh, let's make a note to remember to put, uh, to pick, to put this website in the, let's put that in the chat that we need to remember to put this in the description. <coughs> but if you've not gone to Shrikant's, <coughs> then uh, go to his GitHub and access this study group. And uh, from here, we need to create a, a new branch of this index.html. Okay, so... All right, so I'm in this one. And I think I'm already in the document itself. And so accessing my command line, um, you know, for me, uh, I know that I've created a W3 develops folder. It's here. Um, it's within my desktop. Uh, yours would be, you know, Wherever you want to locate it, you would create a repo. 
uh, we can walk you through that if you if you're having troubles at that point. Um, but uh, I'd also recommend watching previous video that we recorded and we posted. Uh, we went through this in depth uh, in the in the previous video. Uh, we'll also post a link to that video uh, in in the description of this video. Um, but without further ado, let's get into what this group is going to be going through. All right, so CDJS study. I think that's Sam, but his. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, yeah, but. Hey Sam, go ahead and uh, type in the chat what you're trying to say. The, the connection is not so good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, communicate in the chat, Sam. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, you're just, uh, your speech was breaking up on our end. But I'll, I'll keep the chat open so that I don't miss what you're saying. But we'll see if EB joins us. She was was showing that she was uh, active, but okay, so let's see what LS will list out what the documents are in this folder. Um, I'm going to create a index.js. Okay, and then okay, so now Let's look at branch or get branch. Let's see what branch I'm on. Yeah, okay, so I'm working within Elliot's branch. Um, so let's work within this, uh, this HTML document, uh, mess, Messfin and I would even say let's create, let's just create a script. And then we'll just work within, we'll just work within the script there. So I'm gonna comment this out and I'm gonna say, um, We begin free code camp. Basic J, J, JS section today. Okay, I'm going to save that. And I wanted to. I wanted to access this and see. Okay. I want. I wanted to practice what we worked on yesterday. Yeah, I'm just look at you. Okay, so from here. Mm, okay. Yeah. It's or it's already done. Yeah. Add right. Yeah, it seems like you already did three change. Right, to my brain. <coughs> I created a, an index.js and then I created an index.html. Yeah, so um, write, your, write your commit message there. Yeah, and then I, I added in a script. Okay, so the green, the green is showing my my additions to the document is that is that correct? Yeah, those are your change. Okay, cool. 
Cool. So, right there. Scripted. Comment. Okay. Maybe you can say always, then you don't have, it doesn't ask you all the time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then, then I need to click. Yeah. Synchronize. Okay. Which one of these two I click? Uh, I cannot see it. Wait, let me say publish changes. Uh, for some reason, I don't see. Get uh, did that clear me out? Turn them off. Okay, there we go. And then let's see. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I set it up clicking the cloud and synchronize. We'll push and pull commits to and from origin. Hello? Yes. Mesfin, was that you or is that Sam? I think it's me. Okay. Okay, so now I can click okay, don't show again because yeah. I'll be going to the master. Yeah. Or I'll be going to my branch, origin, origin branch. When I when I want to change it, change the branch though, will it automatically just use the branch that I'm working in? Then I'm going to ask you because now from now on you go to update your branch only. Okay. Yeah. No. Did you press that uh, those arrow down there? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Now this time. Yeah. It's okay. Now. So let's say. Uh, can you go back? Go back to your GitHub and let's see if they change something. Yeah, it's showing that it did less than a minute ago. Uh, no, maybe you just, you just uh, refresh, yeah. Okay, so it's just showing that I added these things. Yep. It did it. <coughs> okay. All right. Have you set up your branch, uh, Mesfin? Yes, just let me check once. I did it already two days ago. Let me check once. Okay. Do you want to share your screen? Okay, I can do that. Okay, I'll stop sharing and then yeah. I'll let you share your screen. Sam, were you able to access? Are you able to access your computer, or are you on your phone? You can just type in the chat. Mesfin, are you? Yeah, I just. Okay. Um...
that was really helpful find though syncing syncing the vs code i'm definitely yeah, that's making use of that Can you see now? Yeah, I can see. Okay, I'm also here. I'm trying to. Ah, okay, I have this issue now. <coughs> My local repo and the one on the GitHub is now different. I have to use the same thing. Do you remember what was the that QW? Yeah. Oh, um, I should do this. WQ uh, exclamation point. Or escape. I think it was escape. Escape. Yeah. Escape, enter. Okay, now I think I'm okay. fine. So, okay. <clears throat> I think I should use this uh, git pool. Okay. Yeah, maybe this one. I think that one, yeah. Yeah. One is problematic. Okay. asking for a SSH. Yeah, for some reason, whenever I push something, it's asking me like that. Uh, that's okay, Sam. If um so if it helps, uh, feel free to look at our commits and then uh, work along with us there. But uh, I I am recording, so I'll have this up for you later. And at a time when you can follow along with us uh, with better internet connection. And uh, I'll definitely be talking in the Discord chat as well. I'll let you know how far we get. But uh, main thing will be just setting up um, a connection to the repo for the JS study group. And then uh, we'll be working parallel with uh, our editor and the free code camp content. Okay, just now, let me add something here. Section two. Uh, also, if if you're wanting to just do some reading as well, 
uh, reading through the MDN <clears throat> and uh, also Mesfin shared uh, he shared uh, this link I'll drop it again in the chat um, that looked like a good resource but if uh, if your connection is really bad and you're just not able to keep up with this feel free to just do learn learn by reading and then you can follow the video later but uh, yeah just use this time as like your study time still even if you're not able to join us but hopefully your connection is good enough you know <clears throat> okay, so something is okay now. Yeah, just let me check. No, nothing is changed here. Oh, for uh, your for your branch? I should, should be in my branch, yeah. <clears throat> but it's not changing? No, it's changed. It did? Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now everybody has, you and me has our own branch. We do. Yeah. We can finally, <laughs> I feel like we've been working towards this for yeah so multiple days now but we're finally starting pre-code camp um yeah so uh, if, you want, if you want me to share my screen yeah yeah can. let me stop yeah. and um <clears throat> okay uh, i'll just briefly skim over the reading <clears throat> all right Comments are lines of code that JavaScript will intentionally ignore. Comments are a great way to leave notes to yourself and to other people who will later need to figure out what the, that code does. There are two ways to write <coughs> comments in JavaScript using uh, the forward, forward slash forward slash will tell JavaScript to ignore the remainder of the text on the current line. <coughs> All right, so. I'm gonna just go ahead and do this comment example for a line. All right. <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> you can make a multi line comment beginning with uh, forward slash asterisk. So forward slash asterisk, uh, multi line. One, two, three, okay. And uh, closing asterisk, okay. <clears throat> All right, as you write code, you should regularly add comments to clarify the function of parts of your code. Good commu commenting can help communicate the intent of your code, both for others and for yourself, your future self. Um, <clears throat> Try creating one of each type of comment. Okay. So I'm gonna swipe this and I'm gonna put it in my VS code. All right. All right. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to run the test. And we passed. Hooray. All right. All right. Declaring variables. <clears throat> In computer science, data is anything that is meaningful to the computer. JavaScript provides seven different data types, which are undefined null, boolean, string, symbol, number, and object. 
And I would highly recommend doing the MDN reading if uh, if any of these you're you you don't know what they are like especially I don't know that how <clears throat> in depth it goes on all of these but uh, there's a little write up in the MDN MDN docs on each one of these uh, if any of these are fuzzy yeah yeah well like for for the we can we can go and check there and like this the symbol and i think the symbol is quite new yeah like mdn and even like what i just did there is i just came to this and i pushed tab and then it allows you to search the mdn web so like if i wanted to look up symbol then it would allow me to search it from from the the search field so i thought that was pretty neat when i discovered that okay uh, uh it gives me the how, immediate result how, it, what's that google chrome or uh okay. I don't i'm know using that. i'm using chrome but i have mdn.io and then once i get mdn.io then i just tab and then I can search MDN. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's really it's pretty powerful. So I'm basically yeah. Google searching within MDN now. Only MDN. Oh. Okay. And if I want to look up symbol, then I just started typing symbol and it already pops up and mm. <clears throat> um yeah, but so here I would yeah. go into this. I would read about symbol, that it's a data type. Yeah. So as you come across things that you want to know about JavaScript, I highly recommend even before Google searching, just coming to the mdn.io and searching there because that will be um, – a lot smaller uh, search um, results and they'll also be really focused into JavaScript like MDN um, like I don't know like later we could look up uh, you could look up uh, comments on multiple lines and let's see what that says so that might say what we just looked up Hopefully, yeah, but it would at least let us look at comments, you know. So it let us know that, okay, this is a multi-line comment, you know. But, yeah, so I just highly suggest doing that, because. So it's like you're writing on the, on the address bar or where, like from that MDN IO. Yeah, okay. from from MDN, and then uh, if you've gone there before, like first go to MDN.io, then uh, you know it'll be saved in your history. But then from then on, you can MDN tab, and now I'm searching okay. within the address bar, so I can type my search term. You know. Here now it's basically like it's like a, an element in the DOM as a search term within MDN.io, um, which is really neat. Um, I I saw this as like a a tip, and I've been using it ever since, and it's really cool. You know, yeah, that's you quite can look cool. up prom promises. And when, whenever we get to promises, you could look that up. You know, it'll take you to the page on promises and whatever. It, if you need to know a specific thing like promises and prototypes or you know, different functions of promises, you can you can know them really quickly just by coming here. Um, but uh, I, I found that really useful, so I, I thought I'd share that. That's that's quite nice thing. Yeah, thanks yeah yeah it's uh it's a lot better than getting 
you know, a million hits on Google search and you're not really sure. But if, especially if you can pinpoint what it is that you're trying to figure out, like just break it down to the smallest chunk of JavaScript or whatever your problem is and just look up that one term, you know, and just go like term by term and try to figure out what the answer is that way instead of, you know, an overly broad question on Google that gives you a million hits and you just I don't know, get nowhere. But anyhow, <clears throat> yeah, I would highly recommend if you don't know what in, some of these are, go ahead and do that. Uh, you know, pause the video and look some of these up and then come back. <clears throat> All right, for example, computers distinguish between numbers such as the number 12 and strings such as uh, string 12, string dog, string or one, two, three, cats, which are collections of characters. Computers can perform mathematical operations on a number, but not on a string. Yeah, so like you, there, there's no sense in adding dog and cats because that will just combine the words, but it, you know, there's no mathematical answer of cat dog in terms of like, you know, if you, if you add or like lion and tiger, it wouldn't automatically make liger, you know, uh, it would, it would make lion tiger, you know, the two strings put together, but it wouldn't make liger. Uh, it, it doesn't make some kind of operation change like you would with one plus two equals three, um, you know, instead of one plus two equal, equals 12, uh, it, it's just different. Um, but th that's kind of getting into the weeds. We're not, we're not really there yet. Um, variables allow computers to store and manipulate data in a dynamic fashion. They do this by using a label to point to the data Rather than using the data itself, any of the seven data types may be stored in a variable. Variables are similar to the X and Y variables you use in mathematics, which means they're a simple name to represent the data we want to refer to. Computer variables differ from mathematical variables in that they can store uh, different values at different times. We tell JavaScript to create or declare a variable by putting the keyword var in front of it, like so. Uh, variable our name. Okay, and they've already told us over here that they want us to declare uh, variable my name. So var, var my name, and the importance of putting the semicolon. <laughs> All right. Create creates a variable called our name in JavaScript. We end statements with a semicolon. Yep. Variable names can be made up of numbers, letters, and uh, number sign or uh, dollar dollar symbols or underscores. But we may but make not not contain spaces or start with a number. Okay. So bar. Let's just tease this out. Var um, uh, my number, my name two. Yeah, or the last sign. Okay. Yeah, or var uh, my my name dollar 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 uh, or var. <clears throat> My name, uh, yeah. But each of these, these wouldn't. Uh, each of these would be a separate name, uh, a separate variable. They wouldn't be the same variable. Um, Can you create a variable like var and only dollar sign? Uh, I don't think so, but Try. let's see. Only the last time. 
So let's see what this does. No, just one dollar sign. One dollar sign. Make it one dollar sign. Okay. Let's see what it does. Okay, uh, I'll introduce console log. Uh, console log is a quick way to <clears throat> output to the screen uh, a particular value, uh, variable. So I'm going to output the particular value uh, variable for um, the dollar sign, and it outputs a dollar sign. But no, 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 it's a string I here. Yeah, to do this. Yeah. yeah, and maybe you better give some value. Yeah, yeah, let's see what it says. Uh, let's say 56. Yeah, so that works because it's outputting 56. Yeah, I want you also to create one variable. And give uh, the variable name is underscore only. Okay, let's see what that does. Underscore only. Yep. And let's say underscore is the name of that variable. So now I'm going to test this out. Console. And here's another trick. If you're typing something out like console, then I can, you know, arrow key tab. Oh. Then dot log tab. You know, using the tab is really helpful because it can help you auto complete uh, longer words. Mm. I mean, these are shorter, but that also allows you to create uh, lengthy uh, variable names, and it's not a problem. Um, you know, typing it all out. So I could say my name. Uh, for the free code camp. Oh. And that, that's the other part of it. You can't have a space in your variable name. I don't know that they mentioned that, but that would be the point of adding these underscores for the free code camp. Okay, so you can see that's a pretty lengthy name, but um, you know, and then I'd say uh, John. Okay, so then I console log my name. And so there's that long name, oh, my name, but I just tab it and it auto completes the whole thing. You just enter. Yeah, and now. I added that and it's that you can see John is there. But having a lengthier name can be valuable in the sense that when you're coming back to your code later, uh, you you under, have a better understanding of what, what this variable is rather than naming it, you know, simply something like that. Uh, you know, that, that might be a little confusing of what, what does underscore mean? you know, other than underscore. Um, but if it was meaning something like John, then, uh, you know, that that would make more sense to have a, a lengthier name that kind of describes what the name is. Yeah. All right. So I think we completed this one a while back. Naming but... also should be. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna run the test. And I'm gonna get this snippet. Run the test. It'd be What was that, Mesfin? What were what were you saying? Sorry, what happened? <laughs> I just wasn't able to understand what you were trying to say. No, I was just saying that like the, the the name of the variable also should be somehow meaningful. That exactly, was... exactly. Uh, challenge two. Maybe if you write the the title, the topic from the free core camp exactly, then we know 
there's challenge too. Maybe we don't know what's challenge too. Yeah, if you copy that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and this will be slower, but at the same yeah. time, I feel like uh, if we do this, then um, if anybody happens to miss a day, then they can know exactly where we were, yeah. exactly what we were thinking, yeah. um, what we practiced, and they won't miss anything. Um, okay, so I'm going to add another one for the next line. Challenge three. Okay. All right. Mason, you wanna you wanna do the next lesson and no, it's okay. You can continue. Okay. I do want us to take turns though, because I think, you know, depending on one person to lead the whole facilitate and learn the whole like not but kind of guide the whole thing, it can I don't know. It can just be like monopolizing and everybody doesn't get uh, the experience of reading something out. Yeah, know? yeah, well, and so, because this is very basic stuff, so it's not really a yeah. problem, but of course, it's nice to do some terms. Yeah, once we, once we get through a lot of these, then we'll, we'll have a faster pace. Um, right. Yeah, yeah. All right, so storing values with the assignment operator. In JavaScript, you can store a value in a variable with the assignment operator. My variable equals five. This assigns the number value five to my variable. Assignment always goes from right to left. Everything to the right of the E, or the equal operator is resolved before the value is assigned to the variable to the left of the operator. All right, so variable my var equals five, my number equals my var. This assigns five to my var and then resolves my var to five again and assigns it to my number. Okay, so, all right, so, Let's just do an example. My var equals 100. And my number equals my var. So console log my number is going to equal 100. It should equal my number. I wonder why it's not console logging. Did I miss a step? Console. Did I misspell something? My var. Hmm. That's interesting. Maybe there's something wrong with the, the code or something on the on the lesson. Yeah. And also it doesn't give you any error even reading it, but at least it should give you some error. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. All right. So let's go to the challenge. It's saying assign the value seven to variable A. All right. So A is going to equal seven. I need to declare it as a variable A. Oh, uh, that's what I. That's what my problem is. I didn't var it. I was blaming the computer, but it was my fault. Yes, so you must you must assign it as a variable before. Uh, okay, all right. So a equals seven. Well, I think if if you don't give this a var keyword, right? I think it, it should 
will also automatically understand. What was that, Mesfin? Uh, you were breaking up. What, what was that? I was saying that if you don't give the keyword var, I, I thought it's also understand automatically. It will assign automatically. That was the example here, like my var is equal to five. There's no this var keyword here. Yeah, I'm not sure why it uh it didn't recognize that. Cause that's interesting. But uh notice this, there's a variable A and there's a variable B. Okay, so uh this will be interesting. Console log B. Okay, so it equals two. But if we console log here then it's going to equal something different. It's going to equal seven. So on line 15, it's going to this, but on line 20, it's been assigned to the value of a and a equals seven. So that changes the value. Um, and this should pass. All right, I'm gonna go drop this in my VS code. And I'm gonna save. We may figure out a better way to do this, but let's just do something. All right, challenge four. All right, so our next one. Oh, did I do the wrong one for the name? That's okay. I think I did the wrong one. Wait, this is this. Challenge. Okay, so let's come back. Uh, let's see. Let's just put these next to each other. I need to find a command to switch. Uh, switch my icons. Okay. It's common to initialize a variable to an, an initial value in the same line as it is declared. Var my var equals zero creates a new variable called my var and assigns it an initial value of zero. Okay, so var my var equals zero. All right, and define a variable a equals var with var and initialize it to a value of nine. Okay, so var a equals nine. Okay, I won't console log it because this one's pretty basic. Uh, okay. Okay, submit. Okay, understanding uninitialized variables. 
When JavaScript variables are declared, they have an initial value of undefined. If you do a mathematical operation on an undefined variable, your result will be NAN, which means not a number. If you concatenate a string with an undefined variable, you will get a literal string of undefined. Okay. So initialize the three variables A, B, and C with 5, 10, and I am respectively so that they will not be undefined. They will not be undefined. Okay, so this one should be 5 uh, equals 5 and B should equal 10 and C should equal I am A. All right. So let's console log it to test it out. We can console log it here and we'll see A and B, C, and then we can console log these. A, now let's do this, let's do all of them. Okay, so we see that they're different <coughs> below because C, e each variable has changed here. We added one to five, <coughs> we added five to, uh, what was that, 10? So now it's 15. And then this was a string that said, I am A, and this is a space string and it created a sentence. So. Uh, I cannot see the the console result. Can you make it a little bit? Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So at the top, we have the individual pieces like this. Above, above the new assignments. But when we console log after the assignment and uh, concat, then it becomes something different. But let's try something. Yeah, let, let's get those. Let's try to get the undefined. So A, yeah. A equals A plus C. Let's see what it does. Uh, let's console log these here. So it does some interesting things. I think what it did was it turned the six, it turned it into a string, is what it looks like it did for the A. But let's try to get the undefined. The result will be not a number. Okay. Let's do. Let's do something. Let's do C equals C plus C. Oh no no. How can we get it to say undefined? Let's say C plus D. Uh, because. Uh... To get undefined, I think the variables shouldn't be initialized. One of the variables shouldn't be. I think all of your variables are initialized already on the first line of up. All of them are initialized here. Yeah, so that's why I added in a D. I'm adding I a variable of D or um, yeah. let's just say num. And then let's see what it does. I don't think it did the C, did it? 
free code camps not allowing me to get an uh, <laughs> I guess. Can you just define this num but without okay. initialization? Let's see. Yeah. Let's see what it does. Num. Yeah, it's not it's not allowing me to console on it. Yeah, it, we had this problem the last time. Yeah, but you just say var num nothing. Can you do like that? Then let's see what will happen. Okay. Var num. No, then you don't have to initialize now. It did. There we go. Yeah. So I have to yeah, I have to say that it's a variable and then you have to assign a variable, but no, no undefined. But it combined the string with undefined. <coughs> variable undefined. Yeah. Okay. Can you do some mathematical operation with this num now? Then I think we might yeah, see, let's see num equals num plus num. Let's see what that is. I just did the same thing. And I'm with plus with something maybe with a or and let's do this. Let's do there we yeah. go. Yeah. But it's an undefined plus an undefined. And it did not a number. Yeah. Or undefined plus with something still I think it become not a number. Like num plus a. What will happen? Okay, let's see what it does. Num equals num plus a. Yeah, so I did. I did this plus the string of a plus c. <coughs> yeah, so it turned it into a string. Because now, okay. now it's a string. Okay. So now if we do num equals num plus num, it's going to be a string. Yeah. And so, uh, let's see. What it's, now we're going to get into type of. Uh, yeah, bracket inside num. Okay, uh, num, and it should say string. Yeah. Yeah. But let's do this above. It's gonna say undefined, right? Yeah. So before we did all the information here, it said undefined. And even if we did it here, it would say undefined. Or it said number. Ah, oh, it thinks it's a number here. Interesting. Wow. So it's converting the, the type. Yeah, it's interesting. Console log. Let's just see what it is here. Uh, yeah. Nice. Not a number becomes a number in the type. Interesting. It's interesting. So what makes it to change the, the type? Is it because of the op operator or, or the, co the, co the concatenation? Because it was none, then again become number, then again become string. Yeah, it was the mathematical operation. This operation turns it into a number, even though it's not a number. The, the type not a number is a number still, it seems. Yeah, actually, this is what is JavaScript is. It's just this type conversion or it does automatically, it, it converts. Yeah, it doesn't, um, it doesn't need to be declared as an int or a num or a float. Yeah. Or that's more like a Pythonic or uh, other other languages, like other C C based languages. Yeah. But JavaScript, the um, the type yeah. is. It's loosely. 
it's big, it's like baked in <laughs> based on what you're doing like to fit what you're doing because here we didn't assign we didn't define a an assignment so here it's undefined but here we use the operator so javascript knows that when there's operators then there's math and that can only be done with numbers well it can be concatenated too because if we did this one well if we did this c c here would be type of string type of and then C equals string. Yeah, it's gonna be a string because I am a string is a string. It's a type of string. But this is two undefined variables mathematically combined aren't a string, they're, they're a number. But then once this is combined with a string, then it becomes a string. Because A, a had been converted to a string here and here. Because a, a had become a string because of C. C is the I am a string. So because it's a string, and it made a a string a was five and and six it was a number it converted to a string and then it ended up becoming uh it ended up becoming a string like this this not a number became string the six the six and the not a number even though they were numbers they were combined with strings so because they were combined with strings then the whole thing became a string that's yeah. interesting. Interesting. That's JavaScript. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm glad I did that because I'm Cause just starting to really understand that now. Yeah, in the practical world, like people normally when they are doing like this, they always check because you never know. The, the type is already converted at some point, so you have to check every time. Mm. Challenge five. Okay, now let's go drop our code in. Oh, oh interesting. I didn't know that. You can get a definition. Peak definition. Okay. Peak definition. Bar. Ah, interesting. I didn't know you could do that. You can get some information about your variable. Interesting. <clears throat> Go to symbol. Let's see what else this is. Change occurrences. So there's a bunch of stuff here. Interesting. Huh. There's some little hidden commands in there. <clears throat> when you kind of drill down into your variable. Okay. All right. So anyway, I'm going to get my code snippet and I'm going to drop it in here. Okay. All right, run the code. Uh, a should be defined to evaluate and evaluated to have a value of six. Okay. So I need to comment out this information.
Uh, can I comment as well? Uh, okay, I'll just delete it because I already copied it. Yeah. All right. Basic JavaScript understanding case sensitivity and variables. In JavaScript, all variables and functions name, function names are case sensitive. This means that capitalization matters. All caps, my var is not the same as my var nor my var lowercase. It is possible to have multiple distinct variables with the same name but different casing. It is strongly recommended, but for the sake of clarity, you do not use this language feature. Best practice, write variable names in JavaScript in a camel case where uh, each, each word is capitalized after the first word that's lowercase. Multi-word variable names have the first word in lowercase and the first letter of each subsequent word is capitalized. So var some variable, var another variable name, this variable name is so long. Okay, so we have <clears throat> this list and we have this list, but as you can see, these are camel case, you know, because the first letter is not capitalized and each subsequent word is capitalized. But this set is mixed up. So we need to fix that. So let's just, just take this and let's go stud lee cap bar. And this one's already good. And then title case over. All right. And then stud, stud lead cap var, proper camel case var, tab, idle case over. All right. And it should be correct. I won't do this one because this one's pretty basic. I want to uh, copy the code. Okay. Let's go to the next challenge. I'm just going to make a note of that. How do you comment all this out? Do you have any idea how I can comment all this out without? Toggle line comment, okay. Block, toggle block comment, okay. I think I do. Uh, no, that's not right. What is that symbol? Do you know what this is? Is this shift or is this shift? This is tab, shift tab A. Is that right? Shift tab A. No, it's not right. I'm trying to figure out what that symbol is. Uh, alt A. No. Shift alt A. Ah, okay. Is it command command shift and then this is the backslash? It's a uh, option, shift option A. Then it. It comments all that out. Shift option A. <coughs> I 
in VS Code, and I'll comment that out. Challenge, uh, wait, challenge six on uh, proper camel case from uh, script paste in. Paste in, okay, and then let's go to number seven. Challenge seven. Okay, add two numbers with JavaScript. Number is a data type in JavaScript, which, re which represents numeric data. Now let's try to add two numbers using JavaScript. JavaScript uses the plus symbol as addition operation when placed between two numbers. So we can test this out. My var equals 100 plus 3,400, blah, blah, blah. A bunch of numbers. So console log that. And it's going to It's not why I need a console log stuff. Oh, I got a variable. Not doing the variables. Yeah, so it's that long number plus 100. And it equals that. And we could equally make this a long number and see what happens. Oh. Yeah, so then it becomes that. And next we're going to do subtraction, then do multiplication. But how does JavaScript understand whether it's you are trying to concatenate? Concat I think trying it, to concatenate or adding two numbers? Um, I think it just understands it by types, like var um, my num or my var two equals. Let's just give it an absurdly long number, and then var my var three will be this. So then let's say that that's equal to my var. My var plus my var two. So I, I think it just comes down to the type. Console log. I, I think it's just the type of for the, the my bars. I think it just it, it knows that it's a number because it has all numeric values. But yeah, if it, if it, I think it's, it's about the type. Yeah, it's about the type of the variable. These are green because they're that, but then var text <coughs> would equal um, text. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. See how it's orange? It just recognizes that these symbols are are not numbers, so they're text. And so log. So it, it would know not to try to do math with those. It would only create words. Of. And oh, I put a <laughs> interesting. Yeah, so it would recognize those as a string. 
but it automatically rec recognizes the numbers as the number. So I could even do. So if you try to add this to text and uh, the number, is it going to convert everything to string or what will happen? Uh, I think it will. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it converted it to a string now because my var three has now become a string. But if I take this out, wait, no, it's still a number though. Yeah, no, no, my var, my var, let's do text. Let's see, let's see what this does. Let's just see if we can break this. Uh, my computer, okay, all right. So let's do text and then <coughs> let's see. I will do a console log. Let's see the three. It's not a number. Is this? If I take that out, then it becomes a number. Interesting. Hmm. Did you see that, Miss? Uh, just kind of explain to me because I am also trying to calm down my son here. Uh, okay. Um. Text. So when I add in this, it might be because it's not defined yet. But let's see if I move it. If I move it here. Ah. So if it hasn't been initialized, then it's not a number. But if I initialize text as a string, then it becomes this. It actually became a string. Because now I'm going to check console log. Let's do. Yeah, it's a string. It's, uh, you have it already there, my var2. Yeah, my var2 is a string. But my var3 is also a string. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Okay, anyhow, we're just playing around. To see what we can figure out, but change the zero so that sum will equal 20. Okay, so I just need to say 10 and it will equal 20. Let me just pull this into my code. Basic JavaScript. Subtract one number from another with JavaScript. We can also subtract one number from another. JavaScript uses the minus symbol for, so for subtraction. Example, my var equals 12 minus six. <coughs> Change the zero so the difference is 12. Okay, uh, I think that's, uh oh, my math is bad uh is that 33 is that right i'm gonna have to console like this this is so sad my math is that bad difference yeah okay oh <laughs> uh, me and Hey, good morning, Nori. 
My daughter has joined us. <clears throat> Nesvin, uh, are you able to read read the next one? Or are you having issues with little guy? Yeah, I'm just trying to hear in there. So maybe, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm just trying to follow you. I understand. <laughs> I'm just helping her get... She's wanting to put her... <clears throat> Beauty and the Beast bell dress on. <clears throat> okay. All right. So I can run the test. Uh, uh, maybe I need to get rid of this stuff. Okay. Now let's run it. Yeah. Okay. No. Uh, what about if we stop today in 15 minutes? Is that okay for you? Yeah, that would be fine. Yeah. Uh, I think let's see let's see where we are. So we're here. Yeah, we'll finish these two in the next few minutes. Let's see if we can get to You want to see if we can get to modula, like the, the remainder? Okay. Let's do that. And then we'll start tomorrow with the rest of this. So, yeah. I feel like from here on out, our pace is going to be a lot better. Yeah. But we're, I mean, we're, we're, about, going, we're going out of you, our way to kind of like... Did you commit to your, your change? Still, no. <clears throat> yeah, I, I can. Uh, let's save it, and I should be synced. All right, let me go see my commits. Let's refresh. Oh, this is the master. Okay, I need to go to Elliot. Aha. Uh -huh. Now we're okay. Okay. I still need to go in and commit this then with a message. Um near Yeah, yeah, you have to do that. Uh, through challenge eight, eight, uh, subtraction. And boom. Boom. Hey, good morning, Sayla. Oh, no. And she took me the entire diaper stuff. Didn't she? And she got her shoes wet, but it's not. Oh, no. Did you she get her dress? No. You got your dress wet? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, I just added this. Maybe that's a little too ambitious, Mesfin. <laughs> I think mm. I have to take care of something soon. But... Yeah. Uh, we had a an accident. Okay. My my daughter had an accident. So let's see. Um, uh, let me just talk to them. <clears throat>
<coughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Nora, can you come here? Hey, one moment, Nesvin, sorry. Sorry. Hey, what's up, dude? Nice to see this. All right, let me just let me bring my hands to go for a little <clears throat> okay, I'm back. I'm sorry. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, I wish I could tell how far into the recording we are. Hmm. Hide the video panel. Show the video panel. Mm -mm. Okay, that's not a big deal. You got my shoes, Daddy. You got your shoes? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, baby, oh, my shoes. Yeah, I know. Okay. All right, so let's just see. How much more time do you have, Miss Finn? Like eight minutes or seven minutes to go. Do you have an appointment you have to get to? Yeah, I have work, so I should go there. I see. Okay. <clears throat> have you have you committed your, your work thus far today? <clears throat> Miss Finn. <clears throat> okay. This one, I think we did that one. Let's go to the next one. It's going to be multiply. Okay, let's see. Mason, are you? Yeah, I'm listening to you. Uh, I, I didn't put anything, I didn't push it to my guitar because, yeah, I haven't done anything from this thing, but you are the one who are doing today, so. Okay. I have my own branch and it's ready, so whenever we are doing it, so it's not a problem. Yeah. Were you able, you're right, I mean, you're still doing the, um, you're still, you've been following along with me, so it's not a biggie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just an excuse for us to commit a lot. We can also multiply one number by another. JavaScript uses the asterisk symbol for multiplication of two numbers. So my var equals 13 uh, by 13. 
Okay, so my var, yeah, I already did some of this, so I'll just get to the answer. Change the zero so that product will equal 80. So it has to be 10, and I know that's correct. And it should be correct if it's going to work today. My computer's starting to run slow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Divide one number by another with JavaScript. We can also divide one number by another. JavaScript uses the forward slash symbol for division. My var equals 16 divided by 2 is assigned to 8. So change the 0 so that the quotient is equal to 2. All right, so it should be 33, I believe, unless my math is that bad. OK. All right, so I think that was through challenge. This is very easy. So 8 through 10 were multiplication or subtraction. Multiplication. And division. Uh, OK. Challenge 11 is Increment a number with JavaScript. You can easily increment or add one to a variable with the plus plus operator. I plus plus semicolon is the equivalent of I equals I plus one semicolon. <coughs> Note the entire line becomes I plus plus, eliminating the need for the equal sign. Okay, so. Yeah. So if var i equals um, this crazy number, and then i plus plus one or yeah one. Now I don't even have to do that. I plus plus just becomes. So let's say console log. I is that it's just this number plus one. All right. Sounds like the thing we need to do. Change the code to use the plus plus operator on my var. Uh, what about if you do like uh, I plus is equal to one? <laughs> Uh, if you if you assign it to equal to what? No, the same thing. But I just uh, only one plus i plus is equal. Uh, yeah, I would do the same thing. I think. But, uh, let's check. Plus plus operator. Oh, I didn't do anything. Uh, let's see. Let's say plus plus five. No, it doesn't do that. Plus plus. Thank you. Yeah. I think you would need to do this. I plus equals one. You would need to do plus equals. Like if you wanted to do something other than one, um, then you could do this, like seven or hundred. <clears throat> yeah, that would obviously just take us to nine. 